that there's two particular things we're going to talk about today. One is called the interactive modal dynamics, and it, it's a it's a tool we call IMD Plus. Now, what this is used for is detailed rail dynamic analysis, where we're looking at the structure and perhaps also the um, the, the track system. But it, it's it's more about detailed dynamic analysis. Later on, we're going to talk about uh, rail track interaction. It's slightly different. So, first of all, IMD Plus. IMD Plus basically allows me to build a complex model, and then it allows me to move across it either a moving load or a mass spring system. Now, with these moving loads or mass spring systems, what we're essentially going to be doing is building bogies or wheel sets for trains, and then we're going to be attaching a number of them together to basically create a train set that we're going to basically drive over the structure that we want to look at the dynamic effects on. So this is very much aimed at sort of rail dynamics on structures. Now obviously rail dynamics is important because the train's very heavy, some of the structures are very light, they do tend to um, behave dynamically, whereas highway structures, the vehicles are quite light compared with the heaviness of the structure. So this is a particular problem in rail structures. now. Essentially, what you do in LUSAS is you define your, your, your moving load arrangement, whether it's load or mass. With IMD Plus, you, you basically carry out a, an eigenvalue analysis to, to, to calculate frequencies. In the, the modal response is then taken and combined with these moving load or moving masses. And this is used to calculate the full dynamic response of the structure based on the modes that we're looking at. Now, the key thing here. This can be done for a single train speed, or it can automatically look at a range of train speeds, and this can be done in one analysis. So rather than having to run loads of different models with different train speeds, this is all automated in the IMD Plus facility. So you can basically come up with results in terms of seconds, as opposed to traditional time-stepping techniques, where you might be looking at two hours per run. Now, just to show you some of this, this is a simple shell bridge model, very simple model. Now, here on the right, we've got an animation showing how the structure deforms, greatly exaggerated, as the train goes across the structure. On the left here, we have a nodal plot of displacement. Now, we've got three colors on here because we're looking at the x, and y, and the z direction. Now, the red is obviously the vertical direction. And we get these two peaks at the beginning at the end of the loading event because the train we've got set up here is an engine at the front and an engine at the back. So it's a push-pull sort of arrangement. The vibrations in between are the, the bogies of the, the coach system passing across. Same thing here, three colors. But this time we're looking at how the midpoint of the structure is behaving under acceleration. So, so we're extracting an acceleration profile of a node on that structure. Now, as well as looking at just single nodes and responses at single nodes, we can take a, a node and see how that behaves across a range of train speeds. So here, we've got a displacement plot of going from 210 kilometers an hour to 300. And you can see there's a bit of a blip there, but essentially this is pretty flat. But if we look at accelerations at about two-thirds of the, the, the range of speeds, you can see that we manage to excite a mode and we get a sort of a dynamic response at a given speed. Now, the graphs that you're seeing here are automatically created for you, so you don't have to run the individual models and build the graphs. This is just part of the IMD Plus output, effectively. So it's a very powerful tool when you're looking at different speeds. Now, in terms of results you can get out, because we're doing a full dynamic analysis, you can look at displacements, velocities, accelerations. If you build in the track system, you can get all the forces from the track system as well. We can look at strains and stresses in the saloon. So we can do a full structural analysis in the time domain from the moving train system and it happens very quickly in this IMD Plus tool. And this has been used all around the world. This is just one example, um, a high-speed bridge in the UK, where it was used to basically automate the 
calculations of displacements, accelerations on the structure. So a nice, efficient tool. Now, IMD Plus is looking at a detailed model of the structure and how it behaves. So the key thing here is we can look at complex dynamic systems, we can look at moving loads or moving sprung mass systems. We use modal superposition and it rapidly speeds up the solution. So it's, it's about time and efficiency. Now as I said, this is for complex dynamic situations. We also have a tool called rail track structure interaction. And this is looking at how the forces of um, a train that is accelerating or braking on the rails is then transformed down into the superstructure and the bearings. And this is going to be looking at rail stresses and things. So it's much more about how the track system works. The actual analysis model that's put under that is much simpler than the models I've just shown you. So if we have a look at this, there's more and more high-speed rail routes and even light rail structures now that are, are looking at this rail track interaction as requirements. Now, the reason we're having to do this is we want to accurately model and understand what's happening uh, to the, the track system. Now, it is possible to do some hand calculations of these, but essentially the computer methods mean you have a very fast tool of doing this, and also it allows for optimizations of design. So if you did a hand calculation, you might want to only do one. If you've got a computer tool, you might carry out tweaking of things moving a, as perhaps a, a rail expansion joint to see what difference that makes. Now in LUSAT, we're doing this to the uh, UIC7743 code. Now essentially what we're doing is the, the complex method, and I'll talk about that a bit later. But essentially it's a, it's a wizard inside LUSAS, and the whole idea is going to save you time. It basically allows you to do multiple analysis for optimized design, and it then gives you the results out in terms of what the code is asking for. Now, essentially, we're going to be creating a superstructure model. We're going to model the substructure, the bearings of the substructure, and how the track is connected to the superstructure with a series of joint elements. And it's these nonlinear joints that allow us to apply these loading effects on this side and then understand how those loading effects are transferred through the rail system through the ballast, into the substructure, into the bearings, and the substructure piers. Now, if I show you this, we can obviously look at um, ballast systems, where we're looking at sleepers on ballast, or we can look at um, direct connectivity. In this particular image, it's called frozen ballast, or, or track without ballast. But essentially, this is where you're connecting your track system directly to your concrete deck. And here we're looking at the, the loaded and unloaded behavior of the, the, the track system effectively, because depending whether you have a train sitting on it, it will change the behavior of the ballast system. Now in LUSAS, this is a process that you're going to work with. Now it's set up as a wizard, and you don't actually have to know a huge amount about LUSAS to work with this wizard. Up here on item one, you basically prepare some data in a spreadsheet. I'll look at that a bit more closely. Item two, you pass this data into LUSAS. LUSAS then builds the analysis model. So what we're looking at here is the analysis model. Obviously, here is where the structure goes. Either side of the structure, we've got an embankment. So we're modeling sufficient embankment length to secure the continuously folded row. We can then apply the loading and temperature effects to the structure. This is all automated. And then at the end of the process, you can output the results into spreadsheets, or you can look at them inside LUSAS. So let me just have a look at some of those stages in a little bit more detail. So essentially what this analysis allows me to do, it allows me to look at sort of batch capabilities of multiple structures and multiple load configurations. Now this is a big one, automatically updates the material properties associated with the track based on the position of the train. So if I'm looking at a, a train and I want to consider that train in say 10 different positions across the structure, LUSAS will handle automatically the, the recalculation and reworking of the ballast spring systems. I don't have to go in and manually edit anything. So again, that can save you a lot of time. 
I believe there's some of the programs out there where you have to actually do that manually, and, and it can be quite quite a time-consuming thing. So these, these models are quite detailed, and it then produces all the results you're looking for. So this is the spreadsheet template. Now there's there's six pages, I think, and you basically go through and enter data into each one of those. Once you've done that, you basically suck that data into LUSAS, and the analysis model is automatically created for you. Now, this is the whole model, but if you were to look at it in detail, what you'll see is there's a, a number of these nonlinear joints that are representing the ballast system, and it's those nonlinear joints that will allow the sort of forces to pass through. But if you put too much force on them, they will actually start to sort of move. You can then start to look at the results extraction. Now, this is the spreadsheet um, automation. So here we're looking at track results. Now, all of these pages are automatically calculated for you by the wizard, also for the deck. So all these graphs are automatically calculated. You can also look at your results inside LUSAS. Now, obviously, this requires a bit more knowledge of LUSAS to do this. But essentially, you've got two ways of doing it. You can look at it in the formatted reports, or you can look at it inside LUSAS itself. And again, now, this is where I was saying there's, there's, there's two ways of doing this. If you look at the UCI code, there's a simplified method, but there's also a complete method. Now, we've got a number of test examples where we can show that the complete method gives you a better understanding of the structure. It gives you better results. So in LUSAS, we've, we've, we've implemented the complete solution method. Again, some of the um, other pieces of software out there might only do the simplified version, but we're looking at the complete method. Now, these are just a number of examples, and these are just some of the many places it's been used. Um, South Korea have been doing a lot of um, rail track, high-speed rail track analysis. Um, this is um, one of the viaduct structures that they've been using LUSAS on. A different model in LUSAS, again, looking at a particular viaduct and a bridge system. And there are some of the automated plots that have come out of that, and again, some of the results that we're looking at from those. Another one, just finally, it's even been used on the uh, Dallas um, Rapid Area uh, Transit System. So, again, a number of different case studies. And if you have a look on our website, I'm sure you'll find some more. So, a number of examples. Now, with this rail track analysis, it basically allows you to speed up the investigation and, and prediction of forces. It allows you to optimize the design. It, in the wizard, it allows you to do an automated modeling process. So you don't need to know a great deal about LUSAS to actually use this tool. Again, because it allows you to look at uh, different configurations of train sets very quickly, it's very easy to look at different speeds or different trains. And in terms of the results, because the results are all basically formatted in the wizard itself, again, all of that's automated for you. But again, you can look at it inside LUSAS if you want. So these two tools are very much aimed at the, the rail side of things. IMV Plus is for looking at dynamics of the structure. That can also include the track system, whereas the rail track in, uh, interaction module is much more looking at a, a, a codified approach to looking how the traction and, and accelerating trains pass their forces down into the structure and then how the structure performs. So what I've tried to do in a very short amount of time is just give you a better understanding of some of the more advanced tools in LUSAS.